Hello, I'm Mark Tex Wilson. I'm here at the Kinzu Dam, which is located approximately 10 miles east of Warren, Pennsylvania. I'm here today to resume a personal quest to photograph a live timber rattlesnake in the wild near the western New York and Pennsylvania state borderline. This area at the Allegheny National Forest is known for its rattlesnake encounters. So the roughly 15 mile journey south of the state line was made to further investigate. A closer look at the dam will begin this next leg of the quest. Construction of the dam began in 1960 and it was completed nearly five years later in 1965 by the Army Corps of Engineers. It is 179 feet high and 1,897 feet long with a base that is 1,245 feet wide. This is one of the largest dams in the United States east of the Mississippi River, costing nearly $108 million to build at the time. It spans across the Allegheny River here along Route 59 in Warren County, Pennsylvania. It is a popular stopping point for tourists passing by. This is a closer look at the earthen embankment to the left of the dam which completes its span across the valley. One thing that is very noticeable about its construction is that it spans straight across. I'd assume that this construction was based upon using a design that best fit the physical geography of this location. Many big dams are curved inwards towards the water that they impound, which adds physical strength to the structure. This is the top of the dam. As you can see, it's open to visitors to a certain extent. A gate can be seen restricting public access beyond that point. This is a popular place to take photos from, and also for visitors to feed bread, crackers, marshmallows, dry dog food, etc. to the school of massive carp that linger around in the front corner of the dam below. Here's a look downriver from the top of the dam. This was built as a watershed for flood control, but it's also used to generate electricity. The Seneca Pump Storage Generating Station can be seen to the left center in the video. This hydroelectric plant has a generating capacity of 400 megawatts. The bulk of this electricity is distributed to the area surrounding Pittsburgh. The long steel buildings to the upper right in the video are also a fish hatchery. I don't know if it's true, but it was once said that Kinzu is a Native American term that means many fish. There might be a game fish or two mixed in, but these fish are all pretty much big carp that are impressive to look at. Their distinctive lips can be seen from the top of the dam if looking carefully. Watch these big fellas go after whatever is thrown in there for them to eat. These fish certainly won't have any problem putting on body fat to help them survive the winter. They're really just a bottom feeding nuisance fish but do play an important part in the ecosystem. They are fun to catch, and some very valuable angling skills can be learned by doing so. A duck and some seagulls can also be seen competing for those handouts. This is a quick look at the backside of the dam. Water is pumped in from the reservoir to power the generators which are turned by gravity when the water is fed back into the reservoir. The whirlpool created by this process can be seen where the water is being returned. During the famous flood of 1972, the water level was within just a few feet of overflowing the top of the dam after the region was pounded by rainfall from Tropical Storm Agnes. This is a quick look at the earthen embankment which completes the span across the valley from its backside. The rocks were strategically placed there to keep this levee from eroding away. At one time, this was an area where the timber rattlesnake was plentiful. Now it looks like an area where garter snakes and northern water snakes will be found, although there are still some rattlesnakes around. Just remember that where one species of snake can be found, others will be too. Here's a closer look at the same corner in the reservoir. A set of stairs can be seen leading down to the water's edge. There's no human activity over there. There are trees and foliage bordering the rocky exposed shoreline. The odds of finding a rattlesnake basking over there are probably better. It would be awesome to go over there for further investigation, but the gate closing off the dam to visitors prohibits the possibility of crossing over. This is a look upriver at the reservoir from the same point. This is often referred to as Kinzu Lake, which is the second deepest lake in Pennsylvania. There is far more here than meets the eye. Water is backed up nearly 25 miles to Salamanca, New York. Many pockets and coves were created in what used to be a wooded valley. The orange barrier seen in the distance is a boom set up to keep boaters away from the dam. The dam is located right beside Route 59. The cliffs on the opposite side of the road are really impressive to look at. 
I don't know if they are a natural phenomenon or if they were created by blasting away the hillside to create the foundation to pave the road. There are a few of these small waterfalls that cascade down it. There hasn't been much rain this summer and the others have run dry or have been reduced to a mere trickle. Here's a quick scan of that massive formation of cliffs. There are many loose rocks and shale along the base of these cliffs, but a pile just up the road stands out. Since I'm here and they are easily accessible, a need to further investigate them will prevail. These are the rocks right here in the center of the picture. These rocks are a little too big to flip over, but are certainly good cover for snakes. I don't expect to find any rattlesnakes here because there is too much traffic and human activity, but I would expect to find a garter snake. Since I'm here, some smaller loose rocks will be flipped over out of curiosity. All that is hoped for is about one solid minute of video and a good picture. Before beginning the search, a closer look at the crevices in between these rocks will be made by zooming in. An adult male timber rattlesnake can get as long as 6 feet in length, but are usually found smaller, about 4 feet in length. There are ample enough openings for them to get knees and hide. And now it's time to start investigating. In Pennsylvania, rattlesnakes are protected, so it's illegal to kill them. It's also illegal to capture them without a license. If one is encountered, it will not be harmed or handled. Surprisingly, no snakes of any species were found here. I work with the guy whose grandfather was part of the construction crew that built this dam. He said that the rattlesnakes would usually come out later in the evening when the temperatures were starting to cool down or at night to bask on the bulldozers and other equipment that was still warm. The snakes would frequently still be there the next morning when the men came back in to go to work. Out of fear, many men quit their jobs during those years. But where are they now? I suspect that many of their dens were flooded after it was finished and opened up. If they were trapped inside by these rising waters while hibernating, or by entering too fast for them to escape, they would drown. Dens are vital to their existence. Those that escape might not have found a new den in time to survive the winter. The dam certainly had to lead to their massive decline in this region. This is a view of the reservoir about a half mile above the dam. The Wolf Run Marina is right off of Route 59 near the point where that last scene was filmed. Because of the drought this summer, the low water levels will force its closure a month earlier than normal this year. There are plenty of places to camp, cook out, hike, or sightsee in close proximity to the dam. This public beach is accessible right off of Route 59 almost exactly across the road from the Wolf Run Marina. Rim Rock, which is a picnic area open for hiking with a scenic vista of a pocket in the reservoir, is only a few miles east of the dam and also accessible right off of Route 59. There's no charge to use this area. It will be briefly showcased later. I discovered it by accident passing by and drove about a half mile in to be pleasantly surprised. This walkway is just below the dam and follows the rim of the valley downstream about a third of a mile to a nature center. And now we have finally reached the Rimrock Hiking Trail. Some chipmunks can be heard in the background as the walk-in is made. This is located just a few miles east of the dam by a roughly half mile long paved access road directly off of Route 59. Initially this appears to be the type of rattlesnake habitat that is being sought. 
There's a long set of stairs leading down in the trail ahead. Let's take a walk down. I'm just below that initial set of stairs leading down to the trail and looking back at them. There are plenty of rocks here for basking and cover. The foliage above isn't too thick to prevent some sunlight from occasionally penetrating these rocks to warm them. The only red flag so far is that there is way too much human activity here. The next set of stairs will lead down to the scenic vista overlooking a cove in the reservoir from the top of a high rocky cliff. The scenic vista is starting to appear ahead as the descent down the stairs is being made. This is quite a view. Some people can be heard talking below at the bottom of this overlook. It sure is a long way down. A stairway leading down there hasn't been seen, but there are some steep narrow trails leading down there that have been. For today, I'll err on the side of caution and stay up here since I'm alone and unprepared to do any climbing. The hike will continue around the rim of the rock. This area is within the ranger district. A local resident recently informed me that rattlesnakes have been found in this general area, and it looks rather obvious why. And now the end of the rim is being reached. A look down the side of this massive rocky cliff is pretty impressive. It sure would be nice to be able to look around down there where there is likely a lot less human activity. The hike has led away from the overlook and back towards the flat hilltop. No snakes have been seen out in the open, and most of the rocks here are too big and deeply embedded to flip over. This crevice is good cover and protection from predators in the sun. These are the types of places where I'd expect to find them. A chipmunk can be seen hiding under this rock ledge. To see small game for the snakes to feed upon in an area like this is a very good sign. Another chipmunk has been seen hiding under another rock. This is just one of many seen and heard so far. Seeing them is a good sign, but seeing too many of them could indicate that there aren't enough natural predators around to keep their population down. These chipmunks are used to being fed by visitors and have become practically tame. A few rocks and logs were flipped over to see if any small snakes might be hiding underneath them, and a few stick piles were searched through, but these were very scarce up here. Once again, no snakes of any species were found. This is a final sweep around for a look at the hilltop terrain before heading to the next stop. It's getting later in the day, and there is another place nearby that was noticed on the way here. I would definitely like to explore this area again in greater detail, perhaps next summer when it can be planned and the search can begin much earlier in the day. On the way back to the truck, this chipmunk came out and stopped about 15 feet away on the pavement at the edge of the parking lot. As stated earlier, they are almost tame here. Of course, it's not going to let one of us get close enough to handle it, but it probably relates a human presence to a peanut or a breadcrumb for dinner, much like the raccoons in Allegheny State Park. The area surrounding Route 59 in between the dam and Marshburg is littered with oil pumps and access roads everywhere. Many of these can be seen and entered directly off of Route 59 and extend deep back into the woods. On the way home, a drive down a couple of these roads was made since there wasn't any posted signs seen anywhere. This was mainly in search of more terrain similar to what was found at Rimrock. This area is also within the Ranger District. This area is a little more open than hoped for and without many big rocks or logs present. It's at least 90 degrees and the sweltering sun is brutal. 
It's doubtful that any snakes will be seen out in the open basking in these conditions. If any snakes do, they won't be out long before needing to cool back down somewhere shady with cover, probably back in the wooded areas in the distance. As you can see, there are a lot of smaller logs and rocks scattered around the perimeter of this open area. Since I'm here, some of these will be flipped over to further investigate. I suspect that any snakes found will be fairly small in size, perhaps a garter snake or a juvenile rattlesnake. I sure would like to investigate this ridge near the tree line, but won't be walking through those golden rods without having proper snake-proof chaps for leg protection. Since no snakes of any species were found, another stop was made. This area is just off of another access road near Route 59. It's still not quite the type of terrain that has been sought, but that doesn't mean that there are any snakes here. A northern ringneck was found in Allegheny State Park in a similar spot. There are some rocks here that can be turned over. At this point, all hope of finding a snake today has been lost. It's getting later in the evening, and this stop was made just to further become acquainted with the area. These two rocks grabbed my attention. I need to get out and see if there are any more within the woods prevailed. Initially, no more rocks can be seen, but this area does seem appealing. I'll have to walk carefully through these ferns a little deeper into the wood line just out of curiosity. I think that this area is certainly worth investigating, especially with all the fallen trees and stick piles. At this point, I'm out of ambition and energy. I'll just have to make a mental note to return to this spot next year. To have failed to find at least one snake of any species today has been really disheartening, but the search will continue another day. A final stop was made at Sugar Run near Marshburg on the way home. This stop was just a shot in the dark in sheer desperation. With the drought that has existed all summer long, there was a final hope that a snake may have been drawn in the water to hunt or drink. None were seen along the rocky edges of the creek, but at least a potentially good stream to go trout fishing in has been explored a little. This video is actually the fourth video in what has become a mini-series that documents a personal quest to photograph a live timber rattlesnake in the wild near the western New York and Pennsylvania state borderline. The search started out in Rock City Park, then resumed at Allegheny State Park, and then took a detour to the Kinzu Dam here today. Once again, no rattlesnakes were found, but they are definitely here. There's one last place that I'd like to search before summer is finally over, and that is along the Kinzu Trail, which is in Kinzu Bridge State Park, located about 28 miles east of here. I'm Mark Tex Wilson. Thanks for watching.